Hi, Dr. Hagmeyer here today, and I want to talk to you about a common health food that so many of the patients that I consult with throughout the country are really eating on a regular basis, and how this so-called health food may be a cause behind an autoimmune disease that you're suffering with, a chronic ongoing health problem uh, that you're battling with, or even a leaky gut that's just not healing and responding as quickly as it should, okay? Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, said, let food be your medicine and let medicine be your food. And unfortunately, some of us are unknowingly poisoning ourselves with the very foods that we ingest on a daily basis that we think and are being told are, are, are healthy. The food we're going to be talking about today is something called a lectin. And in just a moment, I'm going to explain to you really what they are and where you find them. But I find too many people are eating these problematic foods, again, on a daily basis, uh, primarily because they're being told that they're a good source of, uh, of proteins and they're a good source of fat. And by the way, this is really going to be a, a first part of a, either a two or a three part video series that we do on lectins. And, and so if you're wondering why you still feel sick after being on a restrictive diet, I promise you're not going to want to miss this video series on lectins. All right. So in today's video, I want to share and, and talk about a couple things. There's really four main points that you'll find in this video, uh, this video today. One, I'm going to talk about really what a lectin is. Number two, I'm going to talk to you about where you find lectins. Number three, I'm going to talk to you about the effects that lectins have on your GI system, your gastrointestinal system. And number four, I'm going to talk about some of the problems or diseases that the consumption of these lectins are most often associated with. Okay. So after that very long introduction, what exactly is a lectin? What does the latest research show about them? Okay. Well, first off, lectins are, are what are called carbohydrate binding proteins. Okay. And you find them in the seeds of plants. And researchers have really found that one of the main functions that they serve in is really a survival of the seed. Okay, think of lectins like a nature's pesticide. Okay, they, they really protect the grain, they protect the bean, they protect the, the, the nut from natural predators. And so they can perforate the intestinal lining, they can disrupt the immune system, and there's even evidence that they can actually bind to certain receptors in the brain, inducing something called leptin resistance, okay? And again, leptin resistance is, is now what we know is associated with um, uh, weight gain, with weight gain, okay? So again, uh, not only weight gain, but, but actually hormonal problems. And I'm gonna be talking more about this in an upcoming video, okay? So one of the problems that we know about lectins is that one, they're not broken down, they're not degraded by the stomach acid or the proteolytic enzymes found throughout the GI system, okay? And this is great for the self-propagation of that particular species uh, of plant or nut or bean, but it spells trouble and it's bad news for you, okay? So what's important to understand here is that lectins are, are more common in certain plant species than others. And, and really, this is important to understand if you're ever going to remove or restrict your dietary intake of them, okay? So let's talk about where you might find these foods uh, in the highest concentration so you can really start avoiding them and, and getting your body into more of a, of a healthy recovery state, okay? Number one is grains, okay? Here's just one more reason why to avoid grains, but really grains of all kinds uh, contain lectins, but specifically wheat, okay? So again, uh, wheat grains are, are obviously something that you want to avoid. Um, kidney beans, for example, or really any kind of beans. So kidney beans, soybeans, and even soy derivatives. Okay, I know a lot of people eat tofu. Again, this could be a, a problem for you. And what I always tell people is if you ever notice that you're feeling bloated or you're feeling gassy after, after eating a, a bowl of chili or some other dish that's made from beans, this is a possible explanation, okay? You have either a leaky gut or, or there's a, a breakdown or a lack of breakdown of those lectins. Now, you're also gonna find lectins in seeds, okay? And that's really important to understand, so seeds and nuts. Um, number five is really dairy, okay? So things like cow's milk, things like yogurt, things like cheese, okay? Things like ice cream, okay? And lastly, you're gonna find these in the nightshade vegetables, okay? And, and the nightshade vegetables are, are really getting a lot of attention through the paleo community because obviously uh, I'm a paleo eater. I, I tell people really, you know, you wanna avoid these nightshades because again, the nightshades can create and induce, you know, a lot of different problems. So if you're not familiar with nightshades, these are gonna be foods like eggplant, tomato, peppers. They're gonna be things like potatoes. They're gonna be things like green peas. They're gonna be things like lentils, okay? And one of the most common problems that we see with people who, who suffer with GI problems is this thing called a leaky gut, okay? And uh, I've written many different articles and I've done lots of different videos about leaky gut. And I would really recommend that you go back, you really watch those videos, read some of the different uh, articles that we have on leaky gut and gluten. And uh, so I don't wanna spend too much time on, on that. What I wanna talk about 
is how that lectins can really damage the, the very, very delicate lining of the small intestines, okay? So again, here we see another food, okay, being the cause of disease, okay? So again, we're talking about the cause here. Um, so what happens is this, is that you, you, know, you consume lectins, lectins get, they don't get broken down, and these undigested proteins are now gonna be trafficked across the intestinal barrier, or what we call translocated across the barrier, and they're gonna get into the bloodstream, okay? Or they're gonna perforate the intestinal lining so that they can, can get into the bloodstream. When they get into the bloodstream, here's where they're gonna activate a very, very intense immunological inflammatory response that is just gonna wreak havoc, okay? So as a result of the lectin consumption, certain individuals may trigger an autoimmune reaction that creates antibodies, which then goes on to be a part of this autoimmune disease process and autoimmune disease that many people suffer from. Now, because lectins look a lot like other parts of the body, okay, and they have the ability to attach to these parts of the body, that's where the immune system is going to now attach uh, or attack and really begin to uh, destroy those tissues, okay? If it attacks, for example, the intestines, you may end up developing celiac disease. If it attacks the thyroid, you're gonna end up with things like Hashimoto's or Graves' disease. If it attacks the collagen of the joints, okay, you may, may end up with rheumatoid arthritis or fibromyalgia. Um, those lectins could bind to certain areas of the brain and could induce things like symptoms like multiple sclerosis or dementia or Alzheimer's. And then uh, these lectins can also attach to the pancreas where they induce molecular mimicry and now the immune system begins to attack the pancreas and you end up with all sorts of problems related to diabetes, okay? And these are just some of the examples of, of different, uh, more common autoimmune diseases, but realize that nothing's really off the menu, so to speak, uh, as it relates to these lectins. Now, in some cases, the signs may be very, very subtle, okay? The chronic inflammatory response may be only recognizable by symptoms such as digestive irritability or maybe some gas, some bloating, some irritable bowel. Maybe you have some eczema or skin conditions, or maybe you even have excess mucus, as, like as an asthmatic. And so, again, these are things that we typically just kind of blow off. These are not things that we typically associate with the foods we eat. But again, don't make that mistake, okay? Now, some individuals, um, you know, some individuals, it, it may be something as simple as a headache. It may be, uh, obviously, bloating we talked about, but um, even joint pain, for example, okay? So taking those pain relievers, you know, the Tylenol, Motrin, Ibuprofen, that's really not going to, again, address the cause of the problem. Uh, realize that these symptoms uh, can really take weeks to develop, okay, due to the delayed response of your body's immune system. So in wrapping up this video, there's a couple things, okay? We know, one, that uh, a leaky gut is almost always associated with an autoimmune disease, okay? We're beginning to understand how certain foods like grains and lectins play a role in autoimmunity. And so if we know that these things to be true, it only, only makes sense that if we really desire to get to the root cause and really correct these underlying causes and alleviate the stress on the immune system and reversing the autoimmune disease, we can no longer ignore the role that foods have on our bodies, okay? Uh, we've done it too long. We need to understand that the need to correct the source of inflammation and support the gastrointestinal mucosal lining for overall health is absolutely paramount. It's not simply, you know, prescribe an anti-inflammatory uh, or take a bunch of steroids, which again, ignore the cause, right? So in our next video series, you're gonna learn how lectins affect your, your, your hormones, how they induce uh, leptin resistance, how they can cause weight gain, and uh, a lot of other different things surrounding that topic of leptin resistance and lectins, okay? So I'm Dr. Hagmeyer. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please pass it on to, to friends and loved ones who are suffering. You really never know whose life you're going to simply change by getting them on the, on the right path and the right road simply by watching something as simple as this video, okay? If you have questions about becoming a patient and working with us, uh, you can either directly call our office or you can contact us through the contact form that we have on the drhagmeyer.com site. Well, until next time, take care and don't give up if you've been battling a health problem. Bye-bye.